Do you have problems with Wi-Fi dead spots in your house? Well, a mesh system may work for you. Today, I'm gonna review the Netgear Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. I tested this in three different homes with three different scenarios, and we're gonna review it today, and I'll share what I found out. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Netgear Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. And just a disclosure, guys, I am not sponsored, nor did I get this for free. This was bought with my own money. So the holiday season came and went, guys. I take two months a year off from YouTube. One is around Christmas time, which is December, and another one's around my birthday, which is in June. This year, when I was going up to New York, I was thinking about like a Christmas gift for my parents. What would be the best Christmas gift? Well, they're having a lot of dead spots in their house. All throughout their house, they have dead spots. Now, it wasn't always that way. It's just their Wi-Fi after a while just goes bad. So I wanted to get them a mesh system. So I did a lot of research, and I got this one. And then I was having problems with my Wi-Fi. So I bought it first, tested it out, liked it, got it from my mother, and then my brother needed it as well with his scenario. So I tested this in three different houses. So my mother originally had a regular Nighthawk that did a pretty great job for seven years. And I'm a big fan of Netgear, especially the Nighthawk brand. Anytime anybody ever asks me, hey, Will, I need a router, what, what do you recommend? I always tell them, just go with the Nighthawk. They're just reliable, apps easy to use, easy to set up, and usually you don't have any problems with their routers. We have one at my business for over over nine years and it finally took a crap and I replaced it with another Nighthawk. I never really had any problems, a lot of great options. Netgear has a lot of different types of mesh systems. They have the Orbi brand, but they start at $300 on up. My brother has the Orbi, he loves it. I just wasn't willing to spend that kind of money on a network. And especially the one I really wanted was like $600. That wasn't feasible for me. And after doing a lot of research and going out there and finding out what I really wanted, I came across this Netgear Nighthawk version, which like I said, I'm a big fan of the Nighthawk. So I said, I'm gonna give this a try. It was originally $300 for this unit, but it was on sale during Christmas time for 200 bucks. Basically, I wanted two routers with ethernet backhauling and I wanted them to switch automatically and only be one network name and password. At the time I was doing that, Apple was the only one that was really had that available, and I also wanted the hard drive capability to back up to time capsules. So that's what I had originally, and that's why I've been holding off on buying this. Unfortunately, Apple has given up the network business, which is fine because I do prefer the Netgear products. But with that said, I understand why Apple gave up because within seven years, I had to replace my router twice. So not really good, and they say that routers, either they get outdated or they just get old, and they only last anywhere from three to six years and then it's time for an upgrade you have to change out your network you know if it's moving slow it means the units getting old and bad or it's out of date now I am no expert when it comes to networking whether it be personal or actual Wi-Fi networks but I know enough to be dangerous and to do some tricks that not your regular average Joe would do. Now I bought the system for three major reasons. For one, the price. For two, it came with two extra satellites on top of the router. And three, Wi-Fi 6. Why Wi-Fi 6? Or otherwise known as 802.11ax? Because it has faster output speeds, better battery life for your devices, and less bandwidth congestion. Now, another reason that I really like these systems, their app is super easy to use, so it's a super easy setup. Basically, you plug in the, the main router and you plug in the satellites, you open up the app, you scan the QR code on the device, and it starts the setup process and walks you through. You make an admin username, and then you make your network name and password, and it goes through the steps. I would say the whole system to set up, you know, unboxing everything, about 10 minutes to get this up and running, and then a little bit longer trying to figure out where you want the sweet spots. Now, the main router only has two ethernet ports, which you can actually use to backhaul to one of the satellites because it has one ethernet port. Now, what I mean by backhaul is if you have a long stretch of area, like I do from my office to my house, it's over 100 feet, but I have ethernet cord going that full 100 feet, I can actually use that router to connect to that router to make one Wi-Fi system. And when I walk halfway through, and if it loses a connection in between, it'll grab the one out here, and then I get my connection back. And that's the thing that I really like, is it's one network name, one password, and they automatically switch, like I had. 
This unit covers up to 4,500 square feet. Like I said, I did these in three different houses. The first one is my house, which has been over five weeks now. My house is relatively small. It's only 758 square feet. Yes, I have a very small house. I'm, I guess, kind of into that tiny house movement. But I have an office that's 100 feet away, and that's where this, with the back hall, worked for me. Now, my goal was to get back what I originally had, which basically was two routers at two locations locations connected through ethernet with the same network name and password that automatically switch to one another. And backhaul is not available on all these Wi-Fi mesh systems. But this one, it is. The second house was my brother's house and he has almost the same scenario I do except his garage is really close to his house but for some reason, I guess because he has metal siding and a lot of equipment in his garage, he couldn't get internet in the garage. Now we tried to use two TP-Link routers to try to network them and I I already ran a wire going out to his garage, but for some reason the TP link wasn't working correctly and he was having nothing but problems and it was very technical. So I told him to go ahead and get this system to put it in there. And he's had it for a little over three weeks now. He was also having problems getting internet out on the patio. So we used the third satellite wirelessly right next to the patio door. So that way he would get internet access on his patio. The next scenario was my mother's two story house. It's 2,500 square feet, a lot of area to cover. I did kind of a pyramid scheme with this one. I did no backhauling because it just wasn't going to happen. This was an aluminum siding house with sheetrock on the inside and a lot of different scenarios and rooms. So I did the pyramid type of things because we put her router in the middle guest room outside the closet and then I put the other one on the other side of the house in her living room and the other one in her dining room or living room slash dining room next to the garage so my father would have good coverage in his garage and they were all done wirelessly. So we have the main one in the middle and then the two out on the outside so that way they get full Wi-Fi coverage. Both my mother and my brother live up in New York and during my Christmas break, I was up there and I set up both of them. So it's been a little bit over three weeks. They absolutely love it. Everything connects good. The only problem I have was my mother's old Windows machine and I just had to update it, Windows 8, for like two hours and it finally was able to recognize the network with the Wi-Fi 6. But all their old devices and their new devices connect to it and they're so much faster even me like I said I'm almost five weeks into this and connection speed is so much faster the only thing that I did notice is that my old fire sticks I think I have a first generation fire stick it did have problems connecting to it but after rebooting it a couple times or forgetting the network and then reattaching it it did get better another great feature that I love because I'm in North Carolina and they're in New York I have access to their routers it has remote access through the app so if they have any problems I can update their router or I can reboot their router from here and see what's going on or if they block something. So I have access to their router so I can help them remotely. So it's a, it's a really good app. And with that said, let's go take a look at the app. Here we are on my iPhone. I have it under Wi-Fi tools. It's just the Nighthawk app. We're gonna open that app up. Sign into an existing account. All right, face ID connected to it so it automatically took my face. Takes a little time to load. All right, and it tries to push you towards their security thing. That's the biggest thing that I can't stand about this app. It has little glitches. I'm not the happiest with it. And it's constantly pushing you to their security thing that you gotta pay a monthly fee. I refuse to do stuff like that. Let me show you around on this. You have device manager. If you click on that, you can see all the devices on your network. And obviously I'm gonna block them out because you don't need to know my devices. This is another thing I don't like about the app. I'm hoping they'll improve it. The fact that it is laggy and then I'm stuck in this screen. Okay, there we go, finally. So I got 75 devices, all different ones. I could scroll down and show you all that. Shows you the actual Wi-Fi connection. If you click on a device, it gives you more information, IP address, MAC address, and how well it's doing. That one's getting 72 megabytes per second. Let's go back. Okay, so that's the devices. It's funny, it said I had 72, but here it says I only have 58. So it's little things like this that are just annoying. You could do a speed test. You could turn on parental controls. I haven't messed with any of that. The speed test is just the same as if you went to a website, you click on it and you could do a speed test. So I could do test my speed. And this usually takes about a minute and I'll fast forward for you guys. 
All right, and that's done. And you could also click on the history here so you could see what the history of your speed tests were. That's my history. Normally there's a picture of the device there. Like I said, apps a little glitchy. It's not there. And you can click on the device and actually see the mesh, but it also tells you it's online and it has two satellites because I have two satellites hooked to this. So we'll scroll down. And if you did click on that image on the top, you'd see that you'd go to the mesh network. And I'm gonna go to the mesh network. I labeled mine. So you got the internet, you got the main router, and then it goes to two satellites. And the hard wire shows that it's actually hardwired. You see a straight line there. So the dotted line means it's actually working through wire. Wi-Fi. So it's actually continuing the signal from the base unit to the satellite. Obviously, I get the better signal off of the hardwired one, but they do work really well. We'll hit the arrow at the top and go back. We'll scroll down to the bottom. You could set up a guest Wi-Fi. You could change your Wi-Fi settings, username and password, and you could turn on traffic meter. I never really mess with traffic meter, but I have messed with this where you could change your Wi-Fi and you could share it with a QR code or you can send a message and share it and then you could pick security mode. So really easy app to use. Another thing is if you click on the home button right at the top corner there, it brings you into more settings and you can go in here and settings, more from Netgear, add a satellite, set up a new device. So if you want to set up another device, if I click on my MR60 local network, that's what the name of this router is, you could see I'm currently on the local one and these are all the devices I've set up for friends and family that I have access to. So that way I can update them and fix any problems they have. We'll go back. And another thing that you could do from here is if you click on settings, right here anywhere access you can turn that on so you can turn it on or off i always do that so that way i can have access to my friends or family network and when they call me and go well i can't get anything to work i need help i'm there another thing is router settings you click on this you can name your router you could reboot it or you could check for updates you click on check for updates and you can see the latest firmware so we'll exit out of that. We'll go back to the main screen. If you want to set up a new device, set up new, just click on that and it starts you through the process. And you can click on get started. You pick which device you have. So for this one, it'd be the mesh. You click on that and then, the, and then you go with the QR code and it should be actually on your router. You can manually connect to it, but I just scan the QR code and it goes through the process. So that was the app. There is another way if you want more advanced features because the app can be limited with certain things like if you want port forwarding or you want reservations for your IP addresses, you can go to this IP address for the router right here. The username is admin, and then whatever you put your password in, you put your password in, you can log into your router, and then you can get into more advanced settings. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of this system. Pros, it has Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest and greatest besides Wi-Fi 6E, but Wi-Fi 6E is out of my price range right now, but we have the latest and greatest of Wi-Fi that's affordable right now. The Wi-Fi mesh is one network name. There is no router two or router one or your router name at 2.4 gigahertz or your router name at five gigahertz. It's all just one name. You connect to it. It automatically picks everything for you. It came with the router and two additional satellites, which are basically Wi-Fi access points, but it came with two extra ones. And I think that's really great. The price, the price is on point. I think that $200 for a mesh Wi-Fi network was a great price. Even closer to the $300 mark, I'm not for that $300 mark. Really easy to set up with the app. I set up three of these units and it took no time at all. Ethernet backhaul. That was a big, big, big thing for me and I wish more of them would keep this included because there's nothing like having Wi-Fi at a certain location and another one is just too far for the wireless to travel to begin with, especially if you have a detached office or a man cave or a she shed or a diva den. It is very fast. I am actually really surprised how quickly because we are cable cutters. My fire stick, my Apple TV, just stuff starts streaming right away. It's very fast. Cons. Everything's got cons, guys. The app is a little bit buggy. Another thing I didn't like about the app is it doesn't have access to those advanced features that if you logged into the router, I, I mean, I can't port forward. I can't reserve IP addresses. A lot of the stuff that I want to be able to do, I couldn't do on the app. And they push you towards that app nonstop. Even when you try to log into the router, they're like, hey, if you want a faster experience, go to the app. That's nice, but the app didn't have this stuff. Uh, another thing that aggravated me is, uh, and a lot of these mesh systems do this, this isn't just Netgear. They put two ports on the back of the router. That's it. Surprisingly, Nighthawk is actually pretty generous with these two ports because a lot of these other price range of mesh systems only have one port. 
just to connect to the internet. So I don't know why they do this, because one of the biggest things that I liked about the Nighthawk was that it had multiple ports on the original Nighthawk, and it had a USB port. So I could hook an external hard drive and have almost like cloud storage or network storage and transfer files and stuff like that. And especially today with a lot of these products having smaller hard drives, it's nice to be able to offload a lot of your stuff through your router onto a hard drive, especially like a laptop or tablet, and you'd be able to get to that stuff. And it was really frustrating because the only mesh system I could find with a USB port was like $600. That's ridiculous. Put a damn USB port in and throw another little ethernet port in there. Not everything's wireless. The router's firmware seems a little buggy. It looks like it's missing pieces because there has been several times that I set up port forwarding or set up reserving IP addresses that it either lose some of the IP addresses or the port forwarding wouldn't work and I'd have to reactivate it and it's been changing a lot. So I updated it recently. I haven't had a problem. It's been two weeks and I really haven't had a problem with that yet, but I'm afraid that every time I update the firmware, it's going to wipe it out. So I've noticed that that has been a problem. So the firmware is a little buggy. For advanced users, another problem that I came across is that you can't just pick a two gigahertz system. There's no way. I have a lot of smart devices. They only work on 2.4 4 gigahertz systems and I can't switch my iPhone over to that 2.4 gigahertz system so that way I can activate a smart plug or a camera and that's been an issue that I've been having so there's no way for me to switch my phone. Apple doesn't offer a way and neither does this router so I can't go in there and say hey only put this on a 2 gigahertz and honestly I went through there and I didn't even see where I could turn off the 5 gigahertz so it can only be 2 gigahertz so I could set up my device and then turn it back on. That's kind of a hole especially with older smart home products that you still want to keep, that might be a deal breaker for you. All right, so my overall thoughts, guys. It's been five weeks for me and almost three weeks for my brother and my mother and father. They've been really happy. I've been really happy. They've had no problems. Everything's been running really great. I've been checking in with them and they've been really happy, especially my brother. He's just so happy to have his fire stick in the garage. <laughs> Me personally, everything's been running really smooth. Everything's been really fast. All three of us have multiple devices, Windows machines, Android machines, a whole bunch of stuff other than a little glitches with the fire sticks here and there and Windows 8, which Windows 8 is just a problem. Overall, everything was fine and it worked really, really great. I personally give this a four out of five. I think it's really close to being that five, but little glitches here and there that I really hope they'll work out and I'll keep you updated. So if you're watching this and you're watching it all the way through, hopefully, I'll leave an update down in the description down below. And I do that on all my videos. If I see something's going wrong, I give an update at the bottom of the video. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you anyway. It helps me out tremendously. And ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make a video. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>